want to tell you the most interesting story in the world. Why a person becomes the person he becomes. Why a little boy or a little girl grows up to be the kind of person he or she becomes. Now the estimates by the experts in this field are that most of us are using somewhere around 5% of our real potential. Some experts say as little as 1%. It means that we're only giving about 5% of ourselves to what we're doing, to our days, our work, our families, everyone we know, our entire environment. But it also means that we're only experiencing 5% of the fun, 5% of the joy, 5% of the rewards we could be knowing, or less. All the experts are agreed that in each of us, there are deep reservoirs of ability, even genius, that we habitually fail to use. Why? We know that most people desire by nature to succeed. But what is success? What is this word that has become so famous in the world? What does it mean? Most people don't know what success is all about. And since they don't know what it's about, they really don't know where to look for it. Success is really nothing more than the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. This means that any person who knows what he's doing and where he's going is a success. Any person with a goal toward which he's working is a successful person. This means that the boy in, in high school who's working toward a diploma, or the boy in college toward a degree, is just as successful as any human being on earth because he knows what he's doing, why he's getting up in the morning, and where he's going. But conversely, if a person doesn't know what he's working toward, what it is he wants, doesn't have a goal toward which he's working, then he must, at least by this definition, be called unsuccessful. Why isn't then, with this simple definition, why isn't everyone successful? It should be easy. Yet surveys indicate that 19 out of 20, 95% at least, are not. In fact, a survey one time asked thousands of working men why they got up in the morning and went to work and 19 out of 20 didn't know. 19 out of 20 working people didn't have the foggiest notion of why they got up in the morning and went to work. Under closer questioning, they said, well, everybody works. Well, that would be a good reason to quit. In fact, here's a little rule of thumb you might want to remember. Whatever the great majority is doing under any given circumstance, if you do exactly the opposite, you'll probably never make another mistake as long as you live. Just something to keep in the back of your mind. The problem with most people is that they're playing the world's most unrewarding game. And the name of the game is Follow the Follower. There's a story about a small town in which there was a jewelry store, and like all jewelry stores, uh, or most jewelry stores at least, he had a big clock in his window. And every morning for years, he'd noticed a working man stop, adjust his pocket watch to the same time as the clock in the window. He'd been doing this for many years, and one morning the jeweler was out in front sweeping a sidewalk, and so he asked the man, he said, tell me, why do you uh, adjust your watch to my big clock every morning? I've noticed you're doing that for years. The man said, well, I'm the foreman down at the big plant. He said, I want to make sure my watch is correct because I blow the quitting whistle every night at 5 o'clock. The jeweler looked at him rather strangely for a minute. He said, well, that's funny. He said, I've been setting that big clock in the window by that quitting whistle all these years. A very logical thing. But they could have been off six months. It was a case of a person just going along with what he thought to be correct without checking his references. So I want to suggest that from now on out, at least we do that. That we check our references and ask ourselves, are the people I'm following going what I want to go? Let me tell you the story of what we might call the average young man in our society. Now from the time this boy is born, there's only one thing on earth he can do, and that's to begin to think, act, and talk like the people by whom he's surrounded. This is all in the world he can do. But right off the bat, the odds are 95 to 5 that he's thinking, acting, and talking like the wrong group. They're wonderful people. They love him. They do anything in the world for him. They want him to succeed. But the odds are 95 to 5 they haven't got the answers he needs if he's to reach fulfillment as a human being, if he's to reach this success that he wants. If he's to reach into these deep reservoirs of ability and genius we know he possesses and draw it out, well, he starts in school. The most important thing to a little boy in school is to be liked by the other little boys in school. And so at this tender age, he begins to 
follow other little boys his same age who don't know any more than he knows and who do not necessarily have any capacity for leadership. Well, what's the problem? Is there a tragedy here? Not really if that's the way Charlie wants to spend his life, our mythical, hypothetical young man. If he wants to spend his life that way, that's his business. He lives in a free society, he can do anything with it he wants. But there's a terrible tragedy here if he's living that way because of the total lack of a decision. If he's living that way simply because he's still doing what he was doing in the first and second grade, and that's going along with the fellows up and down the block on the unspoken assumption that they know how to live, then there's a real tragedy there. Because they've never known how to live. Not in all the recorded history of mankind. He never finds out who he is. He never reaches into the deep depths of his abilities, his talents. Well, what's needed? Well, what's needed, I think, is a checklist. Like an airplane pilot uses. I think that living successfully is as important as flying an airplane. And here are some of the things that I think should be on that checklist that could help this man live a more meaningful, more interesting, more exciting, more enjoyable life. The first thing that he ought to have on his checklist, in my opinion, is the word, a goal. A man without a goal is like a ship without a rudder. He doesn't know where he's going. He then belongs to that 95% that are just living day by day, month after month, like a starfish or an amoeba. The second word on our checklist might be the word attitude. It's been called the most important word in any language in the world. Because it's our attitude toward our world, toward all the people in it, that will determine the world's attitude and all the people's attitude toward us. It's a simple thing, most of us know it, but we tend to forget it. A man's environment is a merciless mirror of him as a human being. And if he thinks his environment could stand a little improvement, all he has to do is improve and his environment will improve to reflect the changing man. Third would be the word think. To think. The highest function of which a human being is capable. It was put pretty well by the great Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Archibald MacLeish in his great play The Secret of Freedom in which he has one of his characters say, the only thing about a man that is a man is his mind. Everything else you can find in a pig or a horse. It's true. And so if we're going to develop something, this is a good place to start. To think deliberately and with a purpose. To spend a little time each day before a blank sheet of paper with our goal perhaps written at the top and come up with some fresh, new and exciting ideas. Well, all of us are given the same land. We're given a human life. And each of us can make something great out of it too if we want to. The next point might be simply the word truth. Since everything we do has an equal and opposite reaction, unless what we're doing is based on truth, we're building on sand and it can't stand. The next point would be R&D, research and development. None of us would want to work for a company or invest our money in a company that didn't have a very viable research and development department. That is, pumping a good percentage of its profits back into research and development because its future depends on it. But so does a man's. Do a little better job than you did a year ago. How much money are you pumping back into yourself and your future? It's worth thinking about. And finally, the strangest secret. At the beginning, I said, what makes a child grow up into the human being he becomes? Well, this is the reason for that. Of course, he's the confluence of a, of a genetic pool that goes back for thousands and thousands of years. His environment has an influence on him, of course. But what makes him become the person he becomes is that he becomes what he thinks about most of the time. I think it's good to remember that if we just go along with the crowd, we won't wind up with much more than the wish that we could do it all over again, and as far as we know, you can't. If we want to amount to anything as individuals, we need individual goals, individual thinking, individual actions, and we must never conform to the big group. We must love them, we must help them, we must serve them, because our whole success will depend on our ability to do these things. And remember to think. Imagination is everything, and we can become what we can imagine. If you find yourself getting depressed and down at the mouth, as we all get once in a while, you might want to remember this quotation by Dean Briggs. He said, do your work. Not just your work and no more, but a little more for the lavishing's sake. That little more which is worth all the rest. And if you suffer as you must, and if you doubt as you must, do your work. Put your heart into it, and the sky will clear. 
And then out of your very doubt and suffering will be born the supreme joy of life. Believe it or not, in an age when we've come to nearly deify leisure time, we've almost lost sight of the fact that virtually all our satisfactions, rewards will come not from our leisure, but from our work. And don't forget the strangest secret. We become what we think about.